Hello, gentle viewers. It's Bianca with Lotus Siri Designs. Let's paint a Bombay chest. Here's the before of the piece that I'm working on. After proper prep, of course, I went ahead and began by applying Sea Spray, Dixie Belle's texturizing medium. To do this, I am adding a scoop of the Sea Spray to a little bit of caviar I had left over in a jar. You can add more or less of the Sea Spray to get more or less texture. After thoroughly mixing it, I decided to go ahead and add a little bit more Sea Spray because I wanted my texture to be a bit more raised. This looks pretty good. There are several ways you can apply the texture to your piece. I wanted to try something new today, so I'm going to begin by pouring out my textured paint onto a plate. I would advise using styrofoam rather than paper. I have this roll of masking paper. I rip off a chunk of it, crinkle it up, and that is what I am going to use to apply my texture. I dip the paper into the texture paint, and I begin to apply it by dabbing it on the front of the piece. Using this dabbing technique, I am able to create raised peaks in my texture. It is also worth noting that if you are going to use this technique with the paper, you'll want to frequently change your paper as you see I am doing here. My reason for this is because as I go and the more wet the paper becomes, it will start to break off into your texture. Once I had the texture medium over the entire piece, I grabbed a fresh piece of paper, crinkled it up, and now, without dipping it into the paint, I am dabbing what I have put onto the piece. This is going to help level out some of those peaks. Doing this step will keep my peaks from being sharp and will be smoother to touch. Next, I can begin my paint process. I started with a base coat of Dixie Belle's Caviar, that's the black that you see here. And from there, I begin to do a stipple blend using the following colors. In the navy, antebellum blue, holy guacamole, and lemonade. My technique is as follows. I put just a little bit of paint onto my paintbrush and I stipple the paint on. I alternate the colors and as I go, I am using Dixie Belle's best staying brush as well as some water. As I spritz the piece with the water, it helps me to blend the colors together using that Bestang brush. To blend, I am swirling my brush in round motions. Watch as I finish up this first layer of blended paint. Now that I've got my first layer of blended paint on, I am able to go back in and using a small amount of paint on my paintbrush, I am stippling on just a little bit more paint in the areas that I feel it necessary. Notice how for this layer, I am not using the besting brush to blend, I am just stippling on the paint. This is going to help add a little bit of a grungy element to the piece. I only do this in random places that I feel it necessary, as I said earlier. For my next trick, I'm going to hand paint a little bit of leaves and flowers onto the piece. Watch as I do that throughout the front and side of the piece. As a retired professional photographer, I still believe in the rule of thirds, so instead of putting my design directly in the center of the piece, it is off and heavily focused on the left half. Wanting to further embellish the piece, I'm going to use a mix of mermaid tail and tree frog green to add little hints of patina to the piece. The great thing about this color mix is that it does give off a patina hue without actually having to use patina paints and sprays. I am dipping one of Dixie Belle's mud spatulas into just a little bit of paint and using the side of the spatula, I'm scraping on a little bit of paint in random places. Next up, I get to use one of the more fun techniques, which is paint flecking. I dip a round, small brush into the color lemonade, spritz a little bit of water onto the brush, 
and using my thumb, I am able to flick paint onto the piece. Taking the grunge look a step further, I use a chip brush dipped into a little bit of the color coffee bean, and I am lightly brushing into the crevices a little bit of that darker color, which is going to kind of give me a glazed look without actually using glaze. Something worth noting is, if you are going to try this technique, make sure you use a very, very small amount of paint on your brush. Let's give the top its own identity. I already painted it in caviar, and I'm going to seal it with clear coat satin by Dixie Belle. To do this, I put a little bit of the clear coat onto a styrofoam plate, and I dip a blue sponge, also offered by Dixie Belle, into the satin and wipe the excess off before I run it in smooth strokes across the top of the piece. Using the blue sponge drastically reduces brush strokes, so if you have not tried this handy little tool, go ahead and pick one up today. Before I move on to my next step, I did let this coat dry for at least an hour. You might be wondering why I sealed it if I'm going to continue to paint it. Well, we are going to use the wood graining tool. This nifty little gadget has quickly become a favorite. Using Dixie Belle's Voodoo Gel Stain, which is their water-based gel stain, I mix two of the colors together, Black Magic and also White Magic. I wanted to create more of a charcoal gray to go on the top of this piece for my wood grain. I brush my custom stain color onto the piece very generously. If you are trying this technique, one tip would be to keep your stain wet with water. Because it is water-based, it is okay to do this. You want to make sure that your tool is going to be able to glide smoothly across the surface without pulling the stain with it. I bust out my wood grain tool and I am rocking the tool up and down and my strokes are going opposite each other and I am slightly overlapping with every pass I make. Once I have done this throughout the whole top, I do go back in and add strokes and knots here and there throughout the piece where I feel it necessary. There is a learning curve with this tool, so it's probably a good idea to do this on a test board before your first time. I let the piece dry overnight before sealing it in a couple of coats of Dixie Belle's Satin Clear Coat. One thing I forgot to document was I used Dixie Belle's Bronze Gilding Wax on the details of this piece as well as the hardware. Gilding Wax is a quick, simple way to spruce things up. And here we are, the final reveal. This piece was a lot of fun to work on and really let me tap into my creative side. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. If you found it useful, please use the links in the description to make your purchase for these amazing products. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.